one of those recipes that when you look it up, most of the recipes are not quite right. Mainly because it's difficult to do at home. But I think we might have just found the way. I know we're talking about tacos, but more specifically, let's talk about home security because this episode is sponsored by Simply Safe. It is an incredibly reliable home security system that is designed to keep your home, well, safe. So I've always wanted to install a security system, but the idea of actually doing it kind of has put me off. But Simply Safe makes it ultra easy. It's delivered directly to your door and you can set up the entire thing in under an hour. Then once it's set up, your home is now professionally monitored 24 hours. Seven. Yeah, that ain't safety. I don't know what it is. You got the home base, you got the cameras, you got the sensors. It's real simple. I put all the stuff up, I checked all the sensors, and they work perfectly. So if you're interested in getting this award-winning security system, visit the link in the description, simplysafe.com backslash Joshua Weissman. Now let's talk about the barbacoa. So today we're making beef barbacoa. We're making the taco form, and we're making the meat, and we're gonna have a special mystery game. At the end, it's kind of a sandwich. It's not really a guest. It's more of like a physical thing that you eat. But you get the point. The meat itself is the most important component. Oftentimes, people have trouble making it because it requires putting an animal under the ground, wrapped in agave leaves, and then a fire, and then there's warmth. Not everybody's gonna do that in their backyard. So we're gonna try and mimic that the best way we can to create the meatiest, juiciest plumpness we can. Plumpness. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Right, oh, so we got a three piece here for you today. We're making the beautifully fatty barbacoa meat, of course, a classy taco, but because I like to get a little naughty, a torta version as well. Now, let us begin with our meat. Traditionally, this would be a whole animal wrapped in agave leaves and then roasted underground, but I figured that I'll make this easy on you and we'll find another way to mimic that. First thing you'll need is two pounds of beef brisket. I really recommend some form of wagyu brisket if you can shell out the extra cash for that intramuscular fat, but of course, regular brisket is fine, and two pounds of beef cheese. Cheeks. More specifically, cheeks that are highly marbled. Cut those into three inch chunks and do your best to keep them evenly sized. Now begin heating a heavy bottom pot over medium high. Add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom. Season all your meaty gentlemen generously with salt to taste. Then add your beef in batches to avoid overcrowding and let those sear for two to three minutes per side so that you get some nice, beautifully deep brown beefy boys. Now look, for the record, this will get browned as it cooks in its own fat, so it's okay to go light on the color as well. Now place those to the side as you finish and repeat with the rest of your buff. Now once you're done, turn off the heat, add all of your beef back to the pot and it's okay to kind of smush your meat all in there. Sometimes you gotta smush your meat. It's fine. Once it's fit in there nice and snug, add two cups or 475 milliliters of beef stock, five to eight cloves of garlic that have been peeled and smashed, four guajillo chilies, two teaspoons or five grams of ground cumin, three bay leaves, and one cinnamon stick. Finally, add a quarter cup more of water just to moisten everything a touch more, then bring that up to a boil over medium high, immediately reduce the heat to low, and bring to a simmer, then add a parchment cartouche inside the pot, or you know, you could also just add a layer of parchment in between the lid and the pot if you don't want to be super fancy. This sort of seals the pot in a similar way that the agave leaves might. Then place your pot in an oven set to 300 Fahrenheit for four to six hours. Yes, patience is key with a good barbacoa. Now that gives us plenty of time to kick back, crack open a cold one, and prep our other components. To make your salsa verde, in a medium-sized pot, add one sweet onion, rough chopped, four jalapenos, rough chopped, five cloves of garlic, thinly sliced, and one and a half pounds or 680 grams of tomatillos that have had their papery skins removed, been rinsed, you know, like a nice little bath, and quartered. Now add just enough water to cook Cover, season that lightly with salt, and place in the stove, set to medium high, and boil for five to eight minutes or till soft. Then simply fish out your veg, place it in a blender, begin blending on medium speed, adding cooking water if needed. Once that's smooth, add half a bunch of fresh cilantro, blend again on high until completely smooth, pour that into a bowl, and cool over an ice bath. At this point, you can season it to taste with salt and lime juice, then just continuously stir until cold and delicious. Now, obviously, you can roast all your vegetables instead of boiling them, but I think this creates a more mellow version that really allows you to taste the unadulterated flavor of the tomatillo and jalapeno. But wait, oh no, papa, what else can I do while I'm waiting? Well, I'm glad you asked. You could also prep your onions and cilantro for the tacos. Now look, a lot of places will rough chop their onions, but instead I like to make a nice even brunoise, which is essentially a fine dice. Now all you gotta do is take a sweet onion, cut the top and the bottom off, slice it in half, peel it, then remove the onion layers like this. Cut those layers in half widthwise, and then cut them into little evenly sized batons. Once you have your batons, cut across those to get a nice, beautiful, even, square fine dice. Papa tricks for the day, and obviously 
honestly for your cilantro just literally rough chop it okay back to my meat i mean your meat i mean like the meat we were cooking once your meat is done remove it from the oven it should be nice and browned and unbelievably tender place it in a roasting pan to gaze upon its jiggly juicy goodness and shred it as finely as you can using two forks now listen carefully i need you to not be scared of the fat shred that bad boy in it's gonna get you that traditional texture and insanely delicious barbacoa flavor now once your meaty meat is shredded taste it and adjust salt levels if needed and i mean come on dude look at this dude if you think this ain't boysin you need to check yourself before papa leave the room now to assemble your tacos get a nice corn or flour tortilla heat that bad boy up and be sure to get a touch of char on it place the tortilla down add on a generous portion of your meaty good good add as much or as little salsa verde as your heart desires hit that with your finely diced sweet onion and finally your very finely chopped fresh cilantro oh and of course a lime wedge don't you just want to cry looking at this cry just for a little bit then eat it so fast it's borderline disgusting to watch but you don't care because you're happy now let's see how happy it can really make us ah eight hours later and it is gonna be worth it you get your taco all right there's a way to eat this we've already put the salsa we've already put the onions the cilantro it's looking gorgeous but a little bit of lime juice let the entrance begin this is the juiciness, the fattiness, it's salty, it's rich, and it's just melting, falling apart in your mouth. This is exactly what you want on a barbacoa. Is it ultra traditional? No, we did not dig a hole in my backyard and then throw a whole cow in there and wrap it in agave leaves. I would love to have done that. I just don't think that the HOA would have approved here. But what we did do, we put it in a Dutch oven to braise, but we covered it with a cartouche to create that sort of steaming effect. So it's lightly braising, it's making all these flavors and falling apart, and now you come to something that is nearly identical to a proper barbacoa. The takeaway is, if you've had proper barbacoa, this is your chance to make it and make it as best as you probably ever will without drilling a hole in your ground. And if you've never had it before, what are you doing? Get your, get to the store. Okay, it is. For the most part, we all have our ingredients that we need. You just need some bread for tortas, which can either be some bolillo rolls or telara bread. Now, all we gotta make is our torta sauce. In a medium-sized bowl, add one cup of mayonnaise, optionally a quarter cup of your salsa verde, two cloves of grated garlic, one tablespoon of chipotle powder, three tablespoons of finely chopped cilantro, and two teaspoons of finely chopped fresh oregano. Give that a mix, season to taste with salt and the juice of one to two limes, stir again, and that's your torta sauce. Right, so assembly is real easy. Slice your torta bread in half, toast it in a pan, with butter till it's beautifully golden on both the cut side and the top and bottom. Place that brother on a work surface and sauce both cut sides generously with torta sauce. Stack on your meat, some of your salsa verde, as much or as little pickled red onions as you like. I actually like quite a bit on the sandwich. It's yummy. Hit that with some crumbled cotija cheese, and lastly, a generous little garden of fresh cilantro leaves. Then grab your other half and carefully crown your king. Split it in half and let the angels sing. Then all you gotta do is take a nice trip to, I'm going to put this in my mouth town. We had to do an extra special one for the people. So, torta, you know, it's a nice little sando. We got some pickled onions. Oh, need salsa. This is the sandwich that you yearn for with the essence, the meaning, the soul of a taco. We know what the barbacoa tastes like, but you've got that acidic, nice mayo, the crunchy, acidic bite from the onion. It all helps cut through that fatty richness. And of course, this delicious, mildly spicy salsa verde. I would give it a mild, but I know some people are going to eat this and be like, oh. Uh, that's so spicy. The point is, if I ever wanted a barbacoa torta, it's this one right here. If you already have barbacoa on hand, you might as well go to a local Mexican bakery before you make it, because you're gonna have leftovers, and you're gonna wanna put it in this. You wanna know what else is full of dripping, moist meat? B-roll. <laughs> Guys, and that is it. So, before we even say anything, thank you again to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Again, if you want to get that award winning security system, visit the link in the description simplysafe.com backslash Joshua Weinstein. And then you can, well, keep your house safe. If you want it, go check it out. All right? Bye bye, love. So, we made our barbacoa tacos, torta, the meat. It's all good stuff. You can do a million things with this beef. You don't just have to put it in a taco and you don't just have to put it in a torta. You could totally just fry it up in a pan and put it next to some poached eggs. Actually, now that I think about it, a barbacoa egg. Benedict. Think about that for a second, okay? Unlimited possibilities with Papa's meat. Use your meat however you want. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.
Thank you. 